Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome back. Um, just wanted to say thank you very much to everybody who uh, watched my previous video. Um, I've noticed that it's taken off in over the last couple of days, which is really nice to see. Um, one thing I really wanted to do here was um, start off by, before going into what I've actually done next with the um, sugar fermentation, I want to answer a few of your questions. So um, at the end of the last video, I showed you how to make a sugar wash and how to ferment that into ethanol. Now, um, I've had quite a few questions which are all along a similar vein, and I thought we'd kick off just by answering um, a few of those questions. Now, the, one of the most common ones was, um, I want to make 80% ethanol, how do I do it? Well, what you've got at the moment in your tub at home, you have a mixture of ethanol, water, and dead yeast. Now, that ethanol concentration is currently around about 15%. It might be higher, it might be lower. Um, it depends on uh, conditions. You know, yeast are a life form and they respond to their environment. Um, some may have more, some may have less. Um, but it's roughly about 15% uh, that it'll be running at, uh, possibly 20 Now, like we said already, that is a solution of ethanol, water and dead yeast. Now, if you want to separate it out, um, if you want to increase the concentration of ethanol, then what you need to do is get rid of everything that isn't ethanol in that solution. Now, that is possible through something called distillation. And there's a couple of different methods um, of how to do it. Um, but we'll move on to those in a minute. So just answer a few more of these questions. Can I make hand sanitizer? Yes, you can, uh, providing you can get your ethanol concentration high enough. Uh, I think the current standard from the World Health Organization is that they're looking for an ethanol concentration of 80% or higher, um, providing you've distilled your sugar wash, then yes, you could. Um, how much alcohol will this yield? I've already answered that, probably about 15 to 20%. Um, can you keep fermenting? Now, this is a finite experiment. At some point, the yeast are going to run out of nutrients and the yeast are going to die. Um, it will expire itself. Um, it will get to a percentage and then it will stop. And that will be for a new a number of reasons. It could be that the yeast have run out of a food source. It could also be because your ethanol concentration has got so high that it's killed the yeast. Um, generally, um, they'll only survive uh, up to about, uh, for normal yeast, probably about 15%. For turbo yeast or brewer's yeast, you probably get up to 20. Um, there are some strains that are more tolerant than others. Um, the other questions that I've had is um, obviously surrounding distilling, because that seems to be what everybody wants to know at the moment. And I do notice that I've got quite a few viewers from all over the world. Now, before I go into distilling, one thing that I want to really make clear, and I really want to hammer home to you is, distilling <clears throat> is dangerous. Um, it's not as dangerous if you're not going to drink what you produce. Um, one of the biggest problems, which you shouldn't find with a sugar wash in all fairness, is that you could potentially produce methanol. Now, methanol is highly toxic, but you tend to get that produced when you use grains um, as opposed to sugar. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing uh, that you need to be careful of is that um, it is sorry? I lost my train of thought. Then it is quite dangerous. It's uh, ethanol is volatile, as you know. Um, it burns, and when you distill ethanol, you either have to evaporate it or freeze it. Now, in evaporation, there is a risk of you you are converting that ethanol into a gas. Um, obviously, it becomes more volatile as it changes into a gas. If that gets near a source of ignition, you could potentially blow the back end of your house off. So you need to be really, really careful with what you're doing. <coughs> the other thing as well is, um, am I going to get into trouble distilling my ethanol? Well, this is a topic at the moment of hot debate, and I've had an awful lot of comments back. And obviously, as, as an educator, I need to follow the letter of the law to a T. Currently in the UK, it is illegal to distill your own alcohol without a license. And I would suggest that if you were thinking of doing this, you should not. It is not safe, and um, it's not really safe to be doing on a home scale. Uh, the other thing that I will say, though, is that I do have viewers that are from all around the world, and I do understand that in the current economic climate, um, things like this might be hard to get hold of. 
and therefore I'm going to give you some re um, some methods in how to do it. Uh, whether you take that on board is at your own risk and at your own choice. Um, but please, if you do uh, decide to go down the route of distilling your own alcohol, please be aware of the safety precautions and please do take care of yourselves whilst you're doing it. Um, like I say again, it is illegal in the UK and I do not recommend that you do it. Um, okay, so uh how do we start here right so i the last time you saw this uh video i had a sugar wash going off and we i've currently taken it out of the cupboard and this here is what i've ended up with um it's basically uh, it's kind of um, a straw color um it's got a powdery sediment at the bottom that's the dead yeast and it's got a smell kind of like uh, honey wine or mead. It smells more like mead if you've ever had mead. Um, it does have an alcoholic smell to it. It's quite heady um, and reasonably strong. So what I'm going to show you, the first thing that you need to do is to try and decant the supernatant. So that means to actually take the liquid off the top without um, actually taking up all of the powder as well. Now, the way that I did this, I'm just trying to pull the video up now so I can show you. Um, the way that I did this was to set up a siphon. And to show you a bit of this clip. Okay, so we're currently in my kitchen here. Um, I set up a siphon and you can see I've taken my airlock off and I'm just about to siphon this out. And the idea here is to catch the supernatant off the top, but to not pick up the powder. Um, if you pick up this powder, it's just gonna be a problem. The, the easiest way to do it is to literally siphon it off. Um, I'm gonna explain why in a moment. And just show you this. So as you can see, you get the siphon started, tip it in, and you can see it's transferring from one bottle to another quite easily and you do that until you've decanted everything off and then obviously you can see here I've just decanted this out so you can see what it's like this here is um, what was at the bottom separated out uh, these are your dead yeast and obviously we want to try and remove as much as possible as that we can so what else did we do so when we went from there um, I've seen quite a few videos on the internet of people filtering um, their what they produce and I can understand the logic you get a clear you get a dirty solution and you want to try and filter it out so uh, I do get it um, but what I did was I thought just as a bit of an experiment I'll have a go with a few different things to try and clean it up and see which is the best possible way so the first thing I had to do um, was to actually make a funnel because at the moment um obviously the uk is in lockdown we don't have uh, the supermarkets are open but it seems like you i'm not going out just to buy a funnel i'm going to do the right thing so because i couldn't find one what i did next easiest thing is literally just cut the lid off um a coca-cola bottle and there you have a makeshift funnel that you can use um, I'll tell you why that you, you don't really need to do this in a moment, but it's interesting to watch. So what I did was I propped my bottle up. I'm just going to show this video. There we go. Um, I propped my bottle up and I got myself some coffee filters, um, which I'd imagine a lot of you can easily get access to. And I started to filter it. Now, this was a time consuming process. This took absolutely ages. Um, but I went for it anyway, just to kind of um, give you an idea of whether you should do it or not. So as you can see, it's taking forever to come through. Um, I did do a little bit of a time lapse as well, just to show you the speed. Now, bear in mind, this was shot on an iPhone in the time lapse setting so that gives you an idea of how fast it's actually been sped up. Um, 
but it's extremely, extremely slow. Um, and you can see there, literally, it's taking absolutely forever to go through. And bear in mind, when we think we've got four litres, I mean, I'm making a brew in the background there, but we've got four litres of, eth of um, ethanol and water to get through. It's just so time consuming. And the benefits aren't that great. And that got me into thinking, well, you know, what is the colour difference here? So as you can see, there's a slight difference. We've got what was settled at the bottom. We've got um, what was actually in the tub. And then we've got the filtered stuff. Now, it's a slight, slight, slight difference. Not perfect. And what's the reason for that? Well, the coffee filters that we used, um, or that I used, are 20 microns in size. The pore size is around about 20 microns. Now, as you can imagine, that is uh, yeast are very, very small, um, usually between five and 10 microns. So the yeast, believe it or not, are actually going to be able to pass through those pores. So one thing that I did do was I had a go. I, luckily, I had kicking around the house. Now, you might not be able to get these where you are, but I had some kicking around the house. And these are um, what's called a syringe filter. Uh, they're used in laboratories. Um, SLS Scientific sent me some um, just as a trial when I was working on a job ages ago. Um, but they're five microns in size. So I thought I would give them a go. Now, you can see you press, basically press through, and the filter um, filters, uh, it comes out of the filter. The problem with this is that these filters bind up quite easily. Um, they get clogged and it's very, very hard to press the solution through. But let me just skip, skip through to where I show you the actual solution. And you can see the amount of pressure that I'm putting on there. Absolutely crazy. Even drawing back, but you do get a clear solution. But that in itself is not practical. I mean, that video there is roughly around about five minutes long, and that's just 50 millilitres that I've passed through. You can imagine if you were trying to do four litres, you'd be there all week. So the other thing that um, I did watch was a gentleman online who decided, who said to put it in the fridge to settle. Now, I luckily had a Jack Daniels bottle here and I decided to separate some out. So I topped this off with uh, the same mix and left that to settle in a closed refrigerator for uh, 24 hours. And unfortunately, it didn't do much. It didn't settle out. So... There you go, 24 hours later. Give you a show at this. So there you go. I mean, that gives you a bit of an idea of what you're looking at. I mean, there is some settling there, um, but I'd imagine I probably need to leave it a lot longer, but I know people were getting quite antsy in the comments wanting to see this video, so that's why I'm, I'm showing you now. Okay, so I mean, that's all about filtering. Now, that's not necessarily the... Um, the best way to get it, it's it's one of them if you want to clean this up if you want to clean this solution up the best way to do this is to distill it there's no other way about it so distillation um when we when we distill something basically we exploit temperature to separate a solution so currently in our solution we have um, ethanol and water. They are the two things that we want to separate out. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. First of all, we go with a dangerous option first. Um, we look at the boiling points. So boiling point of ethanol is 78.37 degrees. So we'll go 78.37 Celsius. 
Um, I would put degrees in, but unfortunately, I don't have degrees on my laptop. Uh, I don't know where to find degrees on my uh, star. Give you an idea of what I'm trying to say. Um, now, the boiling point of water, as we all know, is 100 degrees C. So, in theory, if we put heat underneath our um, solution that is 78 degrees or 80 degrees, what we're going to do is we're going to cause the ethanol to boil and evaporate. It will turn into a gas. Um, the idea then is we need to do, we need to keep, we need to cool that down so we can condense that residual ethanol back into a pot and we catch that residual ethanol in a pan. Now, there's an awful lot of videos on the internet. Um, if you look for a stock pot distiller, it will show you how to do it. Um, generally, they're done in America. Like I said, I would love to do it myself, but it's against the law, and I'm not willing to do that here in the UK. Um, I would suggest if you want to do it and you're from somewhere else in the world, then I would have a look for those videos on YouTube. They're really, really good. Um, if you tend to look for Apple Jack Cider as well, they'll show you how that it, that's done as well, Apple Jack Cider. So the other thing, the other way that we can do it, if we're talking about temperature, the other way that we can um, exploit this mixture is the freezing temperature. So ethanol freezes at minus 114 degrees. Minus 114 degrees C. And water we know freezes at zero degrees C. So if we put our mixture into a freezer and we freeze it, what's going to happen is the water is going to freeze in a conventional household freezer. Conventional household freezer generally runs at minus 20. Um, we, if we put that into the freezer, we're going to we are going to freeze the water but we are not going to freeze the ethanol so the idea behind that is that you freeze it and tip off the ethanol quickly before the water starts to melt the problem with this is that water, ethanol acts kind of like a de-icer so you're only ever going to get up to a rough maximum of a 50 percent ethanol oops concentration via freezing whereas with um, whereas with boiling you could possibly you could get up to 100 um, the one thing that I will say like I say you have a potential to uh, take methanol off here and methanol is toxic if you are going to distill anything um you need to be very careful what you do because like i said methanol can be toxic it can cause blindness or at worst death so you do really need to be careful with what you're doing um so i hope that's answered up a few of your questions and i hope that's at least been clear for you um i'm sorry i've kind of fumbled through this but i'm trying my best to get this video uploaded as fast as I can and give you guys the answers that you want. If you've got any questions, as always, please do drop them in the comments box below and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Um, I, can, I, I do have a small child myself, so I am limited um, with what time I can spend uh, creating videos, but I'm more than happy to answer comments and questions if needed. Um, and thank you for uh, getting involved with my videos. If you've got anything else that you'd like to see, uh, please do send me a message. And uh, yeah, I will uh, endeavour to put something up. But thank you very much for listening. And um, please do look after yourselves and uh, stay safe out there. Bye-bye. Right.